the bacon man did it once again. Evan Bacon posted something on X that got, of course, super popular because this is insane. And we're gonna look at Expo DOM components and what it is and how you can actually use them in this video as a little quick preview. So why is this so cool? What did Evan show? Evan just published, or the whole team at Expo published a canon release of Expo DOM components with a directive called use DOM. So you can try and give us feedback and this will be included in SDK 52, uh, 52 later this year. Uh, he has built a demo app which you can find on GitHub. It is quite extensive, but I wanted to make a simpler demo for you. So here we go. I actually found somewhere buried inside the Expo DOM already some documentation on this. So in our project, the first thing we can do or need to do is install the React Native web view. I also did a couple of other things. Um, so I created the app and then I installed the Canary release. So I picked this specific version because that was also pinned in the repository that Evan posted. And once you do this, you also need to follow this up with npx expo install dash dash fix because uh, it will complain about a bunch of versions in your application. So once I did this, it pretty much looked like this. It's like using Expo SDK 52 ahead of time. We're currently at 51. Uh, so that will give us the latest version. Later on, I also installed Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, Auto Prefixer and initialized Tailwind. However, that part is not mandatory for Expo DOM components in general. And for the first part that I want to show you in this demo. So. Uh, application is loading. Uh, let's quickly see what we got. Uh, we should have a nice little index file over here and I will directly do a new component. I will call this uh, my component.tsx. So React Native Functional Export. Uh, let's actually call this my component. Here we go. And then we should be able to bring this in here. I want to not use that stuff. I just want to use my component. Cool. Uh, so far, nothing too crazy. We got an expo application with that. What are we able to do? Well, we can now include pretty much any kind of HTML directly, more or less directly in our React Native application. And this is what we're trying to do. So our application or our component could look like this. Uh, I'll just copy over the whole code and bring it in here, but I want to change this. I just want to return this. Oh, this is the wrong place. Let's go to my component. I'm going to place this in here and I'm going to use the same props as the demo did. So we now have a DOM component or well, we don't really have one yet. Right now it would complain, but notice I'm going to go at the top of this file and I'm going to say use DOM. Okay, use DOM. And once I got this, this page will be rendered by Expo as a web view. You see, this is so crazy. This use DOM directive is absolutely crazy. My index is turning red because I'm not passing the right params to the next page. So let's say name equals world. And then we would have the good old hello world. We just have to reload this to our web page is built again. And I should probably save all the pages and and voila, we are able to pass parameters to our HTML, which lives right inside of our React Native app. And this opens up so many possibilities for your React Native application. Let me just showcase quickly a few of the things. We won't go too deep into them. Let's just touch on what you can do. So for example, um, you can also uh, interact with the underlying DOM view. Uh, let me see if I get this correct. So after name, I think we can add DOM and then we need to import. So this is looking a bit strange. And of course, in the future, this might or will look different dot DOM props. Okay. Once we get this, uh, we should be able, okay. We think maybe we need to this up here. Once we get this, we could uh, interact with the DOM props directly. And for example, right now I can scroll this and we could easily say scroll enabled um, fault. What is the, what was the exact name? Actually, we need another pair of brackets here. 
Okay, scroll enabled fault and voila, I can't scroll this view anymore. So this is the next thing, how we can interact with the underlying component. We've already seen how we can pass parameters to that, um, but there are so many features about this that it's just incredible. It is really, really incredible. So these are the uh, props. You can also have uh, functions. Let's talk about actions. Actions are really fun. So if you wanted to have an action included in your component, let's say I want to have the say hello from this one. We just need to find the right place. This is the, the hardest part. Um, nice, nice formatting. Then we're going to grab it here, say hello. And then we are able to pass it to this DOM component from our native page. So I can now use say hello and whenever we click say hello, I would do something. So on say hello, I could now easily combine the web view. So the text I got from there with an alert and that is actually a native alert. So this is how you could combine web and native in one um, application. I know we could do this with capacitor and bring in HTML, but this is different as we're living in react native land. So um, now I can have a simple button somewhere here and on click, I wanted to call, uh, say hello from the web. Okay, let's see. And I click, uh, I should probably save this. And I click this button in the web view, but we actually get a native uh, action triggered by that. So this is how we can make these two walls now gradually adopt things. And this is exactly what Evan did in his demo. So he brought in a bunch of HTML and then gradually added functionality in some places um, that trigger native functionality. So if you already have some web code, this makes it incredible easy to gradually transition to React Native. Because most pages you take from the web will already come with some sort of Tailwind CSS. We can use this in our app as well. Um, this is the Tailwind config I use, which has just the app and the components folder as the content. We do have a pretty much empty post CSS config. We do have a global CSS file, but there's really not a whole lot in it. And now in my component, I will simply import my global CSS. So we're not using native wind in here. This is really just tailwind. And I'm going to replace this one here with a simple tailwind string. And there we go. So all of this is just mind blowing. Like imagine what you can do if you can have whole pages of your react native app gradually adopt the things you have built on the web while still combining them with actions to the native code. This is really epic. So let me show you one more example. Let's say you want to go to another about page, which has, uh, let's call this one about TSX, React Native Functional Export page. And on that about page, or we want to go from this web view actually to that about page. I'm pretty sure at some point, um, the expo link component will work. At the moment, I could only make it work with a custom button. So. Uh, let's add a custom button. I'm going to use a bunch of Tailwind stuff in here to make this actually a good looking button here because why not? I can do this. Uh, so far, we're not doing anything on about. So let's go back to the index and say, okay, if somebody in my HTML clicks on about, uh, I'm going to combine this with the expo router. So the use di router directive comes in here and then we say, hey, router push please the um, about page. All right. So voila, now they are combined. They're just not working. That's great <laughs> because I haven't saved the about page, but here we go. Here is my about page. And now your team is saying, Hey, we have this cool feature page. Um, we actually, let's take this one here. We have this page that we developed. Uh, we got the whole code here. Can we just like, can we just use this? And you're like, Sure, I can use this in my React Native application. So you go over, you create your about.tsx, you put in all the code, and then you're gonna see, oh, we don't have the hero icons react well. That is certainly something I can do. npm install hero icons react. Okay, I got that one. So let's see. Uh, I got the features, I got that file. Is there anything else I need to do? Oh yeah, I should probably add my directive, use DOM up here. And then I should also add the Tailwind CSS styling. Okay, 
This is all we need to do for that component to make it work. We now just need to include this component in our about page. So let's go to the about page. Uh, let's set the style here to a flex of one. And then we can just say, hey, please render this cool about component um, me and my team have been working on. It would be pretty cool if, ah, now it's not called about component, it's now called example. Let's change this. Let's call this about component. And I should be able to find this one. Let's do a little reload and ooh, this is the page and it looks actually pretty good, doesn't it? It is exactly what you saw in here. So if you would deploy this now to the web, it would actually get give you the web preview because it's Tailwind and on uh, native, we get this smaller little native preview. Isn't this like mind blowing? I think I, to me, it definitely is. Um, there are also a few more things in here, how you can combine the actions, something about feature detection, how you can use public assets, debugging, uh, how you could use actually manually web views or measure DOM components, which is definitely exciting and uh, important in some places as well. So they thought about a couple of things in here already. And once you get to the end of the page, you're gonna see some limitations and some considerations. And the thing I found most interesting, the, uh, the line was, right here. Overall, this system shares many similarities with Expo's React Server components implementation. So if we have a working implement, almost working implementation of Expo DOM components, and this is like a precursor for Expo server components, I feel like we're not far off from seeing React Server components becoming a reality in Expo. I don't know what you think about this, but definitely shout out to the whole Expo team, to the Bacon Man himself who did this. I think this is incredible work and this will get a lot of companies, a lot of teams really, really excited because many of them have Next.js web applications or some sort of Tailwind React uh, applications and sites and they can now gradually bring this into native applications with React Native and with Expo DOM components. Again, if you just jumped around the video, this is still very experimental. This will ship probably with S Expo SDK 52 later fall this year, or I don't know exactly the release date, but it's going to be exciting. So I'm definitely fired up. I'm super excited about this. Let me know in the comments what you think about this, because to me, this is big, but I would really love to know your opinion about this. And also, if you're still unsure about React Native, Check out the video I pinned up here about some pretty epic builds built with React Native. I will catch you in the next one and until then, happy coding, Simon.